Well, Mervyn King is one of the players who you always imagine, well, I always imagine, I'll only speak for myself, as the kind of angel and devil on the shoulder when he's playing darts. So maybe he was having a little look at that devil, Dan, who made him miss the bullseye. I imagine many things about Mervyn King. That is just one of them. Produced some quite six, six. spectacular checkouts at the World Championship. One against Steve West, I remember, to stay alive. The 136. I think that was the winner of your coveted Iron Ring Award, Dan. Yeah, it is uh, one of the greatest and most coveted awards in world darts. I'm not, not my words. The words of Gerwin Price, the current holder, who was delighted to be presented with it at the UK. 36. The Iron Ring for outstanding bottle under pressure. Ask Merv where that came from, those kind of shots. 104. So it was from somewhere deep inside himself. I just left it at that. <laughs> I don't want to know anymore. I think that was wise, Dan, and I think yeah. we'll leave it at that right now as <laughs> Rob Cross <laughs> looks to apply some pressure to the Mervyn King throw. But having threatened to take out 161, now he's threatened to take out 156. 100. Well, Rob Cross came under a sustained assault in the semi-finals in the early stages against Gerwin Price. Gerwin Price hit 180s in the first four legs. He was 3-1 up. He could have been 4-0 up, Gerwin Price, but for a couple of missed doubles. Rob Cross did not panic. He just kept his cool. And right now he is keeping his cool. Two apiece with Mervyn King. He's won his two legs without his favourite double 16 coming into play. Well, both semi-finals went all the way. I... I on the other streaming board, Dan, I've had, I can't, I've lost count of the amount of 6-5 games that I've commentated on over there, and it will be kind of fitting for today, for this one, to go the full 11 legs. Been some really dramatic clashes today, dramatic stories happening from things that we haven't seen on the screen. Michael Van Gerwen beaten by William O'Connor. Paul Nicholson continuing his 36-hour resurgence. <laughs> Let's see if he can continue. He, he defeated Peter Wright, and of course, Daryl Gurney was a man that saw off Gary Anderson today. None of the top ten seeds reached the last eight. Really, really interesting stuff. And Rob Cross showing the kind of darts that have been knocking the top boys out. Yeah, first 180 of this final goes to Rob Cross. He has hit a 177 as well, of course. Had a nine darter today as well from Kim Hybrex. Merv. Is he seeing things that we can't? <laughs> it does look that way, doesn't it? It really, really does. Well, can he see into the future and let us know 97. which way this contest will pan out? It was a weird episode of Quantum Leap where he leaps into Mervyn King's body in the middle of mm -hmm. Players' Championship Final 3. 100. Has to see him over the line for his first title in two and a half years, but I would watch that episode. Needed the treble 14 for a go at double 16. 51. And Mervyn King has got a chance here for the break, for a second consecutive leg to go back into the lead. That doesn't help, Merv. 84. To cross on tops. King on double 16. You don't want to let Mervyn King have a go at double 16. Game shot. So don't. That's my advice. Rob Cross taking it wisely. And he is 3 2 up. Three more legs for Rob Cross, and it is a dream day for the man from Hastings. You mentioned how the UK Open last year changed his career. It changed his life, genuinely. He's quit his job now. He has dedicated himself to darts. And when you look at how Mensur Sulevich, when he decided to play all the tournaments, we'd seen Mensur for a number of years, dipping in and out of things, playing the odd weekend, playing a big tournament, winning a qualifier, making the Worlds a couple of times. But when he actually came over and dedicated himself and played everything, look at the progress that Mensur Sulevich made. So much so that he was number three seed for today. And he's won PDC titles, made a major final. If Rob Cross is on some sort of fast-track Mensur Sulevich plan, where you don't faff about for a few years playing at it, but actually go for it, and he actually has similar amounts of talent. He could do all kinds of damage this year. As Mervyn King fires in his first maximum. 
Well, look, we can only go from what we've seen so far, and what we've seen is very, very impressive and very, very promising. And look, he could be on the verge of winning a PDC title within his first nine professional events. Now, looking back over the last few years, I don't think any player has made a quicker impact in terms of success in PDC events since Stephen Bunting switched from the BDO at that time he was Lakeside world champion yeah exactly and it was kind was of expected yeah. yeah he was a name Rob Cross was a nobody 12 months ago he's not going to take out the 170 Wonderful. but he has left himself handily placed Mervyn King treble 10 20 for double 16 it's his favorite that's why. 3-3. Three, three. Finally balanced. Today's decider very fitting with what's gone before. Rob Cross chasing a maiden, almost immediate PDC title, Mervyn King in the hunt for his eighth and first for the best part of three years. Well, at £10,000 to the winner today, if Rob Cross was to go on and claim the title. I mean, he could emulate Bunting in making the match play in his very first year, which is one heck of an achievement. Mm, you know, when you look at players who haven't won PDC titles, Daryl Gurney's been talked about for the Premier League. He's going to play in the World Series. He's not won a title yet. But Rob Cross might be about to. Mervyn King will have something to say about that. And does Mervyn's experience just give him the edge, particularly if this goes close as it is threatening to at the minute? 140. Leaves himself 163 there, Rob Cross. Not the first time he's done that today. Yeah, and that's a case in point about experience, isn't it? 96. Although it matters not now. Because he's going to be somewhere near a. Well, he's going to be on a couple of dark finishes, isn't it? Ninety-seven. So sixty-six for Rob Cross to move within two legs of winning Players Championship three. Ops for fifty-four. Game shot. To leave twelve and pins a double six. It's not a route we see very often, but it proved very effective for Rob Cross. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Taking it out in a couple of darts. His finishing under pressure was one hundred and forty. Probably the standout highlight or trait in his win against Gerwin Price. Took out a number of finishers with Price there threatening. But he just seems to enter into some sort of Dave Chisnell-like zen state mm -hmm. where nothing is passing between the ears and he can just throw. Yeah, we'll talk about impact players. You've got to look at Gerwin Price as well. Yeah, certainly. 93. But, you know, Gerwin Price won back-to-back -back Pro Tour titles, but he'd been playing PDC, that was his second year in PDC Pro. He had to learn how to do it. Rob Cross has just launched himself into it. Although, as you say, the Challenge Tour experience has obviously helped, and you look at how Ryan Searle has taken to his life as a tour card holder, like a duck to water, it would appear. He's produced some very good wins himself. Yeah, certainly proving a successful breeding ground, as is the development tour. We saw Ryan Meekle hit a nine data last night. Mervyn King. 92. Not going to take out the 140, but he'll leave himself handy. Yeah, Merv will get two darts at his favourite double, and you kind of, you're almost giving him the leg already here, mm. particularly with the first dart we can use as a guide. Game shot. Yeah, he, absolutely deadly. Four apiece. It is a best of three game, and Rob Cross has the advantage of throwing first in two of the three remaining legs. Can he hold his nerve? Can he get over the line? Can he deny Mervyn King his first PDC title in two and a half years and his eighth in total? Or will the Merverts be celebrating? Very interesting to see 60. how it would affect Mervyn King's career. I mean, I, I mentioned in the commentary earlier on, I spoke to Simon Whitlock when I arrived here and he said that when he saw Paul Nicholson win through last night, he reminded him of himself when he won that Pro Tour in Ireland last year, it was as if 
my ability that's been missing, my confidence and my attitude that's been missing has all come flooding back. And could that be what happens for Mervyn King? I mean, we know he's always a fighter and a battler, but he hasn't been in the winner's circle for two and a half years. He's always maintained belief in his own abilities. But there's a difference between knowing what you can do and being confident that you are going to do it on any given day. And sh the only thing that does that is actually winning. And Mervyn King, a win today, could spark some Mervyn renaissance. So like uh, yet another Mervyn mm. renaissance. 134. Well, Rob Cross has left a finish, but Mervyn King needs a treble to leave a rather smaller one. However, now he just needs to concentrate on leaving one. 91. Well, he gambled there. Some players would have gone the bullseye just to get below 161, so they wouldn't need the bullseye to finish. But, oh, Rob Cross, another one of those, and he would have had a dart at tops. But Merv gambled, he hit the treble 17. Now one treble gets him a dart at the bullseye. Yeah, it's a double chance shot, the 130. But he's not going to get a dart at the bullseye. Although he's cleaned it up nicely. And Rob Cross will get two darts at double, providing he hits the big number. And he's been pretty successful on this segment as well. Game shot. There we go, Rob Cross hits Mervyn King's favourite double. And he's one leg away, Dan, from a PDC title. And he's been very good at that all the way through today. I've commented a number of Rob Cross's games, and he is not scared when there's a, a clutch dart something he needs to hit, just taking a moment, stepping back, he'll wipe his hand on his trousers, then address it, and more often than not, he has pinned it. Some players, when they take a moment, they step back, it just seems to increase the pressure. You can almost see it on their shoulders, getting heavier and heavier. They crumble, but nothing like that from Rug Cross. Well, neither player has showed signs of crumbling so far in today's decider. 100. We had a new major winner. Just six days ago in Minehead, Peter Wright, you want to talk about dart players starting to take things seriously and changing their life and career, Peter Wright must be the poster boy for that. Will we get a brand new professional title winner here today? 81. It looks likely to go down to one leg right now. It really does. It certainly does after that dart. 128. Oh, uh. Wonderful stuff. Leaves himself. Double 18 to take us to a final leg. They broke each other in the first two legs of this game, and after that, it's just been hold after hold after hold. Sometimes they've been under pressure, but they've held their nerve. Mervyn over for double nine. It's a tricky switch. It's a tricky mm. switch. And Cross should get at least one dart at bull for the match. He may get two at double 16. Well, I was just thinking, if you miss it, Merv, pull it into the big four, because it's inevitable that you'll hit the double 16. But well, this is the moment for Rob Cross. Treble or single, didn't even think about the treble. Bullseye. He's taking his time, as you just mentioned. Composes himself, takes aim, cross fires. 61. And fires just wide of the target. Rob Cross misses the bullseye. For the title, his first in PDC darts and Mervyn King punishes him on double 18 we are going all the way bump of the fist rob cross still the narrow favorite by virtue of winning the ball and throwing first in this one but having missed a match door can he shrug off that disappointment and put in a strong leg here well that is a heck of a start well we saw mervyn king still win the semi-final deciding leg despite the fact that his opponent went off with back to back 180s 100 it's not how you start in these pressure situations, it's definitely how you finish. And that's the beauty of this game, you've got to win the leg, you can't just protect, you've got to finish the job. Well, Rob Cross, can he finish the job? Undoubtedly. Winning the Challenge Tour, an incredible achievement, particularly in his first year on the Challenge Tour. His runs at the UK Open, absolutely stunning. But to go and win an actual title, a title in a field which contained the top three in the world, let alone the five-time world champion Raymond Van Barneveld, whom he beat, Alan Norris, whom he beat, Mervyn King, who he may be about to beat right now, but Mervyn, to leave a finish, 
100%. Sensible use of the bullseye. And he does leave a finish. Now then, what a way to win it this would be. Oh, just underneath. So Mervyn King will get a shot at 160 to win his eighth PDC title. Deny Rob Cross his first. Well, he needed to dig a little deeper. 60. For what would have been a stupendous way to steal the final leg. He's left 100. Cross, 68. For his first PDC title, two more darts. Double two. And Rob Cross sticks it in the corner. The man from Hastings in his first, what, ninth tournament as a PDC pro has claimed his first PDC title. An incredible story here at Barnsley Metrodome. Rob Cross, if you doubted this lad's ability, he has just emphatically answered any questions.